Who is George Catlin, you might ask? Well, if you've watched any of our videos before, you've probably seen several of his paintings. Without George Catlin, we might not know what many of the key figures in the Black Hawk War looked like. That makes him rather important to telling the story of the conflict. But as we are about to see, Catlin's work extended far beyond the regional conflict. George Catlin, painter of the painted peoples. Born on July 26, 1798 in Wilkes Bar, Pennsylvania, young George Catlin grew up listening to stories from his mother from when she was captured by Indians during the Wyoming Massacre of 1778, which was part of the wider conflict of the American Revolution. Although he loved hunting and fishing, his father pressed him to become a lawyer. Yet, after a few years of practicing law in Pennsylvania, he moved into Philadelphia to become a painter. Mingling with prestigious artists like Charles Wilson Peale, Rembrandt Peale, and Thomas Sully, Catlin taught himself how to paint, and was skilled enough to be elected to the Pennsylvania Academy of Fine Arts in 1824. But one day, a delegation of Native Americans from the far west passed through the city. Catlin was captivated. He declared, Nothing short of the loss of my life shall prevent me from visiting their country and becoming their historian. In 1830, two years before the Black Hawk War began, Catlin set out from Philadelphia for the West. When he reached St. Louis, he contacted the famed explorer, William Clark, who was then the superintendent of Indian Affairs. Clark invited Catlin to accompany him to Fort Crawford at Prairie du Chien. Their treaties were scheduled with the Sioux, Missouri, Omaha, Iowa, Sauk, and Fox. Catlin took advantage of this opportunity to paint the prominent leaders of many tribes. Catlin took special notice of the tension between Keokuk, who was supported by the vast majority of his people, and Black Hawk. Catlin described Keokuk as very subtle and dignified, well fitted to wield the destinies of his nation. On the other hand, Catlin called Black Hawk, a poor, dethroned monarch, an object of pity. Catlin found both men so interesting that he painted them several times throughout the 1830s. Catlin not only focused on the individual leaders, but also took interest in entire peoples and their plight. Catlin expressed genuine sadness at the loss of the way of life and prosperity of the Native Americans, which he encountered. When contemplating the Kickapoo, many of whom would join Black Hawk in his attempt to reclaim lands east of the Mississippi, Catlin observed that they lived in a poor and miserable condition, having been reduced by whiskey and smallpox, the game destroyed. They are exceedingly poor and dependent. For several years, Catlin moved across large parts of the unsettled country. He accompanied military expeditions, stopped at forts, trading centers, and treaty assemblies. He painted Native Americans from the Sauk, Fox, Menominee, Creek, Choctaw, Iowa, Missouri, Omaha, Cherokee, Osage, Seminole, Pawnee, Mandan, Hidasta, Ojibwe, Sioux, Ponca, Comanche, Blackfeet, Cheyenne, Wichita, Delaware, Wea, Iroquois, Ottawa, Crow, and Winnebago. That isn't even the complete list. By Catlin's own count, he visited 48 tribes, representing a total of, by his estimate, 400,000 people. He painted 310 portraits and 200 other paintings which portrayed Native American homes, clothing, games, ceremonies, and hunting. Catlin was an invaluable documentary painter. He cared about the facts and wanted to portray the Native Americans as real people. Although he sometimes only hinted at details in his paintings, at other times he gave much attention to the details of the subject's jewelry and clothing. Thanks to his efforts, we have a clear image of Black Hawk and many of his supporters. In some way, Catlin's full-color paintings of the Native Americans were painted at the exact time of this conflict. They are superior representations of the conflict than those black and white tintypes taken of the white settlers and soldiers. These images were taken decades after the war and show the men and women significantly older than they were in 1832. 
Not only did Catlin contribute to the visual record and history of the peoples he visited, but in 1841 he published two volumes titled Letters and Notes on the Manners, Customs, and Conditions of the North American Indians, A Treasury of Tales of Travel, Adventure, and An Extinct Way of Life. In 1844, he published a collection of his work titled North American Indian Portfolio. Later in life, he published more works, made several expeditions to South America, exhibited his work in Paris and London, and finally moved his work and himself to the Smithsonian Institution in Washington, D.C. There he died in 1872, the day before Christmas. I hope you really liked this video. If you did, Give it a thumbs up and subscribe to this channel if you haven't already.